<laughs> I mean, that's... you were driving the clicks, as they say, Ted. Yeah, that's never been my goal. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I never woke up with that in mind that I wanted to do that. Are we ready to go? Sure. Um, first of all, Coach Collins was telling us the truth when he said that during those times we had him on Zoom, we were doing some interviewing, but so was he. So I want to thank him for the trust that he's placed in me and the, the opportunity to be a part of this. I think that we are in a, a transition and we're trying to create something new and something better. And uh, I appreciate his trust uh, that I can be a part of that transition and, and help make that better. The second thing is uh, Coach Brown and thanking him and, and having the vision. I had a very narrow lane and, and those of you that were, were around, uh, that lane was a difficult lane for me to stay in. Uh, but because it was so important to coach that we follow the rules, uh, he was able to, we built a relationship, but he was also able to have some vision out ahead to, to know that the relationships were built on the right things and that I was going to be able to bring some, some new things to the players that can help us all be better. And I think that from an experience standpoint, being able to help the staff where I could, all of those suggestions that I made a year ago, uh, they could take them or leave them. Now I've got a chance, because I'm really one of the guys, that I can continue to hammer things if I need to hammer them. So, but I've got a ton of, a ton of respect for what Coach Collins has done in his career, and I've got a, a really, I'm really enthusiastic about what we're gonna do together going forward. So, uh, some, I was just sitting back there, and I'm a, a little bit of a words that work guy. So, I'm thinking about the things that really apply to me specifically and me personally. Uh, I'm excited, right? I'm determined, I'm focused, I'm honored, and I'm aligned. And I think that that word alignment is really important. And the thing about all that stuff is I could put not, I could take the word I out of it, in front of it, and replace it with the word we, because in our time that we've spent, uh, that's been our goal, right? Is to make sure that we're aligned and that everybody's pulling the rope the same direction. And, I think that we are that way. When I was here in front of you last time, we talked about things that were important to me and uh, getting our best players doing what they do best most often is the best way for us to play better defense. And it was really apparent within the first 15 minutes of our talk with Coach Collins uh, that he was of the same mindset, right? We, we don't need to have guys that are our best pass rushers in coverage. We don't need to have guys that can't cover a 6'4 wide receiver covering a 6'4 wide receiver and that's important to him that we find those things that our guys can do and focus on those it's instead of blaming them for the things they can't do and that's not to say that that was our our way before but I know it's a really high priority to him to find the things that our guys can do and let's do those things more okay so uh, all that being said, if there's any questions, I'm, I'm here to answer them. Yes, sir. Coach, uh, first thing Collins mentioned was defensive line. Yep. You've been around them a lot. Yep. What did you see from the time you got here last year to now as far as growth there in the season? And what kind of were your expectations sure. going forward? Well, the one thing that, and Coach Brown mentioned it, um, what a great job Tim had done recruiting that, that room here. Uh, there's a bunch of really good players in that room. I, when I was at Missouri, I didn't feel the same way top to bottom with that roster of defensive players. I did it one year at Missouri in 2018. I was an analyst. So I know we've got guys that physically can do all the things we're asking them to do at, that, at those positions, right? It doesn't matter if you're talking about either edge player, right? Those Des Evanses versus those Cayman Ruckers, right? Or you're talking about either inside position, the... Uh, Kevin Hester's and the Travis Shaw's and those guys. We've got plenty of guys that can physically do it. Now what we've got to do is we've got to figure out what the best way is to use their dominant traits in situations that they can help us win games. Can they all go out there and be great grunts down in and down out? Sure. But that's not what players want and that's not what we want, right? We want impact. We want plays that change games. It's easy to find a player that can change plays. But when a player has the ability to change games, we've got to bring that out of them and we've got to let him do those things that change games. And that's where we are. I feel like we've got a really good group. I, I love the, the growth of the group. I know that talking football with them is easy. They understand ball, they get it. They're not, a, hey, line up there and sick them. We've got enough, enough background with the group that I think that uh, we can ask them to do some difficult things and they'll be able to hold up doing them. The you understanding. You got to follow up, can I get a follow up? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. On the middle side of it, how much of that 
I mean, they struggle at times this year, and sometimes they may get down on themselves. How much of the mental aspect of it have you had to coach with some of these guys, getting them to get the best out of them right. going forward? Well, I think that um, we've got a – there's a, a thing across all football at all levels, right, that, that, that celebration or that – being down doesn't last very long, right? Because the this world moves quick, it moves fast. We've got about 15 minutes to worry about it and then we're on to the next <coughs> one. Um, so we didn't have a lot where those guys would get here on, you know, Sunday afternoon. Once we put that film to bed, that was over and we were done, we were moved on. Um, yeah, they, they all want to be great and they all want to do better and they all want to help their teammates win. Um, so being able to get to those guys early enough in the week and point out the things that they did that we can build on, those that's a critical part of it. And I think that that's, that was a strength of what we did with the staff. We were able to move on quickly. Uh, we just didn't solve the problems uh, that came up. We, it's hard to see around corners sometimes, right? And we didn't do a very good job seeing around corners uh, defensively here. And uh, I think that that's going to be a big part of our mission moving forward. Okay, how can we put our guys in position to what we predict will be the next tough thing that we've got to handle coming down the road. The understanding was that you'd be here a year and you'd go back into the NFL. Uh, I, I would imagine there were some opportunities, but they announced that you were going <clears> to, <throat> you'd taken the D-line job a week before the chaos in the NFL right. opened. It was also before a defensive coordinator was announced. How much did you know the idea that Collins would probably be your boss, or did you not know at all and you took this job based on what? Yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea. So the thing went down with Tim and I on the exact, on the same day. Um, uh, I had very little indication of what may or may not happen. Uh, I knew that as I was driving back here from Atlanta, I got to go home over the, over the new year. So I was home over the new year and spent some time with, with my wife and our two sons. Um, I was driving back. I was 15 minutes off campus and Coach Brown called. Um, said he had just let Tim go and wanted to know if I was interested and if I was, would I, would I be committed? And I said yes to both. I am interested and I am committed. So. Uh, I had no idea who was, the coordinator was going to be. I just knew that uh, the head football coach at the University of North Carolina wanted me to be a part of something special that, that he wanted me to, to help him get to where we're trying to get to. I believe you expressed to us last year when we talked to you about maybe getting back in the NFL. So what was it about your year here that made you decide, you know what, I'm not even going to look at anything else. This is where I want to anchor down. Um, Mac mentioned it when he was up here. Uh, I do think that we're, we're really close. I know that we've recruited a bunch of good players here. This league, I don't think gets the respect it deserves offensively. This is a difficult league to play great defense in. So those, those four schools that played really good defense this year in our league, uh, that's, a, that's a huge compliment to those four defensive staffs and, and groups of players. What I, I'm at the point now in my career that I'm looking for the greatest challenges. I'm looking for the greatest uh, opportunities to work with the people that I want to work with. Jeff mentioned it, right? It was really important for him to be around people he wanted to work with. And that opportunity presented itself here. Um, this NFL thing, it's, it's a crazy, crazy thing and it's spinning fast right now. And uh, there's gonna be an awful lot of things that happen over the next three weeks. And it's really nice for me not to have to worry about that. <laughs> So you're a college coach now, Ted? I am. I am. Yes, sir. Yes, I am. We know with all the talk about the late season problems, now that you're one of the guys and you're sitting around the table when Max says, well, what do you guys think? What, what will you throw out in terms of... Um, that's a great question, and that's a difficult answer because we all have a voice. Um, sometimes it's important to know when my voice should be heard and I, I wait until, it, until it's my turn. Um, I know that we didn't finish the way we wanted to finish, but I also know that our numbers were our numbers most of the year, right? Did we start great against uh, South Carolina? Absolutely, right? And then we put our system on tape and now, then people started to game plan for what we were doing. Toward the end of the year, there were a whole lot of factors that led to what the finishing numbers were. But at the end of the day, 
we didn't go from being fourth in the country to being 95th in the country in total defense in the last four weeks of the season. We've got a long ways to go, but we got, we're just the men to get there, and we've got the right players in place to get there. I, I'm not going to look back at any of that stuff. I'm going to look forward and how I can help Coach Collins make, make, help Coach Collins make his vision come to life. Um, and my job as an assistant coach is to make Coach Brown the most successful head coach he can be. So um, I'm, I'm going to keep my opinions to myself till they're asked, till, till I'm asked for them. Uh, when they're when I'm asked for them, then I'm, I'll give them. But as of right now, I've got another a different lane that I'm in. Ted, it's it's hard to quantify. I mean, there's metrics for everything, but in terms of quantifying attitude, like, would you say that? I mean, you need to to work on getting a different attitude, just defensively as a whole, maybe defensive line specifically. Yeah. Is that an area that that needs to be addressed and changed and ramped up? I think that something that. When you look at defensive systems, does that system allow that defensive player to be what he wants to be? That helps all that attitude, right? If I'm giving you an opportunity to make tackles for loss and to sack the quarterback and to bat balls down and to make special plays in the run game and in the pass rush, then that's what defensive players want to hear. And I think that's the message that we're sending right now. We're going to give them the opportunities they need to let their light shine. Right, and, and we've got guys that have pretty bright lights if we'll just lift the basket off of them and let them, let them shine a little bit. I think that they've got a great attitude. I think they're in a great place mentally. I think they're excited for the new opportunities and for the, for the change. Um, and that's not directly or indirectly a reflection of what happened here before. Uh, we're all eyes forward looking for that next opportunity to be better. So when you're spending that year as an analyst, and I know you were at another school before, there were a lot of limitations. You mentioned the narrow road that you were on. Yeah. A lot of limitations. <clears throat> were there so many times where you just wish that you could just get in there and grab a kid and show him maybe this is how you get off the snap or get your yeah. butt down, whatever? And are you, do you have like a massive catalog of things that you want to identify with each of these guys to go through right now? Um, there are things for each player that I think that we can improve on uh, that'll happen rapidly. Uh, the beauty of my relationship with our entire defensive staff is what I saw, I was able to communicate to those guys, and, and they all were way into especially the little things that I suggested. Um, Tim was great. If I needed to get something to Tim, hey, Tim, next time you see this, think of it this way, especially when you're talking about what the nose tackle does in this call or in this situation, uh, boy, he's right on. And, and so that's not going to be a big change because a lot of the things that I did bring up, they were just about sound football and about doing what's best for the guy. Um, it will be different, and my hope is that it will be better from a communication standpoint, from a technique standpoint, and from all those things, not because what we were doing was incorrect, but because now what we can do is we can merge what we're doing with what the system asks us to do. So I'm, 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 I'm encouraged, I'm determined, um, I'm excited about the new opportunities for our guys. Uh, Ted, I uh, wanted to ask you as well um, if you've had a chance to kind of address the you know defensive line group as a whole, like whether meeting with them on in person versus whatever. Just like kind of have you had a chance to talk with them, and if so, what kind of was your message to those guys? We met uh, the same Tuesday night that Coach Collins had a unit meeting. We had a position meeting, um, and as of right now, that's that's the defensive line and the outside linebackers. We all met together. Um, that's going to be something that's a little bit fluid moving forward about where those guys are going to be on a daily basis, especially the outside linebackers. Um, that's been my background in the NFL for the last 16 years. I came into this business as a defensive line coach years ago. Um, so right now that, that merging of, of a little bit of the technique in those two position groups makes all the sense in the world. The meeting itself was about relationships, it was about truth and trust, it was about my vision and, and aligning with their vision for themselves, and uh, it was an encouraging meeting. I think the guys are excited for the change. So Jeff, does, I mean, Jeff I'm so sorry, Ted. Ted, does that mean you have to figure out if Rucker is a DN or an outside linebacker, or Des Evans is a, is that what you mean, like, because you have, you're, I guess you're eliminating the Jack. Not necessarily, no. We're still gonna have the position group uh, because that group, that's a little bit of a hybrid position and he does different things than Des Evans would do. But what, at the end of the day, we've got 15 minutes of individual on a Tuesday and in that 15 minutes, how am I going to coach the nose 
and take on double team and also coach the sandbacker playing quarter flat. We're going to have to, that's the fluid part of it, right? It's going to be how, how, what's the best way we can use our resources from a coaching standpoint to make sure everybody's on the right page and in the, moving in the right direction from a technique standpoint. Um, I, I've stood in front of larger groups than defensive line guys and outside linebackers combined, so that's not a problem. I can, we've got plenty of resources to get everything coached that we need to get coached. But from a, a, a fine detail standpoint, um, that's the part that's in a little bit of flux. Though we, we still will have guys that do a variety of things, right? Des does a variety of things. Cayman Rucker does a little bit different variety. So yeah, it's, um, we're excited for the, for the change and for the transition, and uh, we'll find out what the best way is to get those guys the work they need so we can play really well on Saturday. Ted, um, hypothetical. If this team is not as tough and nasty as you want it to be. How do you teach toughness and how do you make it contagious through the rest of yeah. the team? Well, I think that you, you have to point it out. When you see it on tape, you have to point it out and you have to, you have to praise those guys that, that show that. I think that uh, you also have to point it out when they need to make an improvement. In right? This, uh, when I ask a player how good he wants to be, if he tells me he wants to be the best, and I put the pointer on him in the meeting room, and I say, hey, man, the, the best guy doesn't practice like this. I need you to be tougher in this situation against this double team or against this down block kick out. And if, if they're of the same mindset, they'll buy right in. And if not, it'll be a long, it'll be a long challenging relationship. Uh, but I know this, all of our guys are willing. Every one of our guys is, you can't play at this level if you're not tough, physically tough. Um, but I think that overall, mindset-wise, you'd love to see the whole thing reflect that toughness, right? And uh, I think that's what that's why Coach Collins and I are here. Since you mentioned uh, Des Evans, he's using his cover to come back for a fifth year. Um, do you look at him maybe still as a bit of untapped potential because he's got such a high ceiling? And is there an element of excitement for you to have the opportunity now to directly tap that potential yeah. over the next nine months? For sure. I think we know what Des Evans is now. I think we know exactly what he is. Uh, do I think that there are some places where he can show more things? Absolutely. Am I excited about the opportunity to tap into any unreached potential? I think we know what Des is. I'm not, I'm not going to say that we haven't uh, reached that point where we know exactly what are, are there ways that we can use Des differently that may lead to some more production in some different areas? Yes, absolutely, and I'm excited for that. That's going to be something that we as a staff do, right? That's not going to be something that all of a sudden I'm going to say, okay, Des, instead of lining up in, with your right hand down, I need you to line up with your butt toward the line of scrimmage, and that's all of a sudden going to make him a better pass rusher. That's not the, that's not the objective. The objective is to get him to do what he does best more. Right, and if there's something that he does best, he if he has a dominant trait, let's find a way to use it. Ted, how about getting back into the scrum of recruiting full time? Yeah, um, is that daunting? Is it exciting? Is that uh, I've always time? loved that part of it. It's the there's the stuff that happens after the recruiting day that's been the hardest thing, right? So when I was when I when I had a high school age son, I was glad to be in the NFL because I was able to go watch my son play on Friday nights, not somebody else's son play. When I was at Arizona State and I had the Metroplex in Dallas and East Texas, uh, at the end of the recruiting day, it wasn't much fun to go back to a hotel and be 1,500 miles away from my family. Um, not at, at all scared of that. Uh, we're at a different stage now, right? We're, my wife and I are empty nesters. Our one son's coaching football in San Antonio. The other one's a sophomore at SCAD, and our daughter's in Des Moines. We've got three grandkids. So they don't need dad home every night. But um, our, our goal is to, to continue to build as strong a family as we can, and we'll figure out the best way to do that through this recruiting change and how it works. But um, it's so different now than it was when I did it last, right? It, when I did it last, I had a geographical area, and I was responsible for every single player in that geographical area, and I didn't have any help. Right, other than I found a guy, I found an offensive guard, I took it to the old line coach, he watched it. He took it to the offensive coordinator, he watched it. He took it to the head coach, he watched it. And if none of them liked him, I didn't, I didn't have to go back there again. Now it's different. We've got this little army of people that narrow that pipeline to a pretty narrow spot before it ever gets to me, and that's helpful. Um, so it's a different thing now. Now with 
all the other stuff that Mac talked about that's way above my pay grade, the NIL and all of that transfer, all that mess, um, that's somebody else's responsibility. My responsibility is to make sure that I know my area, that I get the right players in front of the right coaches, and that we're able to build our roster into a competitive roster at all positions. Um, I'm not at all uh, nervous or scared of that. That's, I think I understand what that is. Ted, with, with, with your relationship with Gene, it seems like you guys have been friends for a long yeah. time, and, and your conversations between you two brought you here. Um, and I mean this question with respect. Like, as last year was getting toward the end, did you sense frustration from him about things just not working out? Just I, with the defense's performance, did you guys talk about that? That was frustration for all of us. Yeah. I never felt Gene take his foot off the gas. Uh, I know that it was really, really important to him all the way through until it said zero, zero, zero on the on the clock at the bowl game. Um, I never felt any frustration with him. I never felt that he was uh, already making plans for beyond the season. I had never had any of that feeling because that's the professional that Gene Chizik is, right? He was a, he's a great pro, if nothing else, right? He, he worked his tail off to try to help us be successful and a um, ton of respect for him. My relationship with Coach was, uh, it was, um, we talked about this last time, it was love at first sight. It, it wasn't, I hadn't known Gene for 35 years. This was one of those deals where I met Gene and we aligned from a football standpoint immediately and we were able to move right into really valuable conversations. Um, I wish him and John nothing but the best and uh, I know that he deserves it and he's earned it. Ted, uh, I wanted to ask you real quick uh, just about, you know, some of the returning the guys that are coming in. You obviously talked about, you know, finding things that, you know, they do well to kind of for them yeah. take the next step. But having so many guys, especially on that defensive line returning, how, you know, kind of helpful is that for a defense that obviously is getting a new, you know, coordinator and things like sure. that? Just kind of how helpful is it to have some of those same guys uh, on that defensive line? I think we have a real clear picture of what they can do, right? And then we build the system that allows us to use those skills the best way. Um, that's a huge advantage, right? It's a huge advantage. Now, uh, having, again, credit to Tim for bringing those guys in here. Those are really good players, and he recruited every one of them. Um, but knowing that we've got that base, that foundation, everything starts there. Uh, you heard Coach. It's the most important thing when Coach Collins talked about what, you know, what position group do you look at first? Do we have a defensive line that can can be successful in this system and he said absolutely we do and I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, we do have guys with different skill sets which is really encouraging right we've got some guys that are going to be better on third down than they are in first and second down we've got some guys that are going to be better against big people than they are against the passing game so uh, I think we've got a great place to start a great place to, to build from um, and those guys uh, they love they all love ball so they're gonna they're gonna do whatever we need them to do to help us all be better. It's not a technical term, but did you all get pushed around too much at the end of the year? Do you think up front, Ted? Um, oh, you know, we all we all would love to say that we created a flat wall on every snap and the ball poured where it was supposed to. And I don't think we got physically dominated much, you know. So when you say pushed around, uh, I think that there were times that. The, we, we were in the perfect storm business where we may have had a movement on and it was going in the same direction as the run game was going and if you start running that way and the run's going that way and I grab onto your inside shoulder and run you that way, sometimes you feel like you're getting pushed around a little bit. But um, we didn't, I don't think we got physically dominated very often. I think that there were times that simply doing our job got us a little sideways uh, because of the, of the job we were asked to do. Um, on the playbook page, great. It's awesome. It's sound. All 11 guys have a designation under their, under their little picture on the playbook page. That's all great. But there's also, let's not forget, at the snap of the ball, there's a 320 pounder that's trying to keep you from doing all nine of those things you're supposed to do at the snap of the ball. And he'd like to gore you. Yeah. So we got, it's, it's 11 on 11, 11 one on one games. And sometimes you do get moved around. What's good? Can I ask one more? What's the biggest difference you've seen from a college player and an NFL player, aside from the talent and the age? Right, right. <laughs> I think that that and the paycheck. We've got a really strong pro approach here. Our guys study tape on their own. 
our guys spend extra time in this building and uh, they do a great job in the training room of taking care of their bodies. The biggest difference between professional players and college players is the professional players understand that the margin of the, their, the margin for error is that big, right? They get humbled on a daily basis, right? These guys, uh, it's Kevin Hester, for instance. It's hard to find 6'5", 330, walking the streets. So he's a different dude, right? And those guys, it doesn't matter how big you are, how smart you are, how, you're going to get humbled every day. And that's the thing that, that I think it, the difference between college football and pro football is there's a, a much, there's a humble approach to everything that those guys are doing in pro football because they know that they're one day away from being embarrassed every single day, every rep. Um, maturity is a big thing. Um, profession, right? It's, they don't have to worry about academics. They don't have to worry about money. They don't have to worry about all that other stuff because it's taken care of. Um, they're special people. There's only, you know, 53 of them on 32 rosters across the, across the league, and that's, that is across the world. So there's 10 defensive linemen times 32, right? That's 320 of them on the face of the planet. That's not very many of them when you consider we've got 85 full scholarship guys here. Ravens special winning people. it all. Pardon me? Ravens winning it all. They got the best team in football. Got a ton of respect for what John's done, and and they've got the best team in the ball right now. Um, now that's I didn't say yeah they'll win it all because <laughs> because, <laughs> because that, that league that Dallas found out yesterday right right Dallas found out yeah and, and that league is like I said it's that close and every single day every rep every meeting everything matters a lot in that league and you're not just going to walk in and beat the Green Bay Packers because you're the Dallas Cowboys. So do I think that the Baltimore Ravens have the best team in football? Yes. Um, I'm sure that San Francisco thought they had the best team in football when we beat their ass in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But you're not fired up. No. 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 All right. Good. Yeah. <laughs>